Hey everyone, welcome back to the vlog. I forgot to record an intro for this one, so I'm recording it now a few days after. Uh, it's like June 3rd or June 4th right now, so two or three days after I played. Um, this one's super fun, it's a 2-3 game. I had a lot of um, interesting spots and there was a lot of action I was able to record. The lighting was a little bit messed up in some of the clips, but it's not too bad. Um, overall, it was a pretty fun session. I'm gonna try to step back from 5-5 five, five a bit and just focus more on 2-3 because I think I have a bit more, um, uh, not luck, but I, I perform a little bit better in 2-3 just because I think it's a little bit more my skill level since I'm such a beginner. Or 5-5 five, five was pretty tough in some spots. Um, I feel like I wasn't able to consistently win in 5-5, five, five, where 2-3 I'm seeing some more consistent winning. So we're going to stick with that. I'm going to keep studying using the programs online. I'm going to keep taking your guys' advice. And uh, you know, also we're close to 500 subscribers, so that's super exciting. We we gained a lot over the last couple months of since we started. So um, I appreciate everyone for tuning in and subscribing and giving me feedback and everything. Um, it's going pretty well. The vlog's going good, and poker I'm getting better at, but um, still still have a lot to learn. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the video, and uh, see you guys next time. So in one of the first hands of the session, we pick up 10-9 offsuit in the button with about $300 behind. I believe I bought the button here because I have some money in. I'm not totally sure what was going on there. But anyways, I open raise to $15 here um, in position with a lot of limpers. I want to make sure we punish that. So the small blind ends up calling the $15 and the big blind calls shortly after that. Under the gun plus one makes the call and then middle position also makes the call. So we're already five players in this pot. Um, it's a 2-3 game and everyone's calling the $15 open raise. Cutoff also makes the call for $15. So I'm expecting at least one or two of these players have some pretty decent hands considering um, the $15 open raise. So the flop comes out 4-9 ace offsuit with about $90 in the pot. Small blind checks, big blind checks shortly after that. Under the gun plus one middle position and cutoff check to me, uh, I make a C bet here for $40, even though this board does not really favor us. We have middle pair, but I just kind of want to test out the table. Uh, small blind calls the $40, big blind folds, under the gun plus one calls the $40, and now action is on middle position here. And looking back at this hand, I'm not totally sure why I made such an aggressive bet early. Um, I guess I'm just repping an ace or something at this point, but my opponents could definitely have one as well. So uh, middle position and cutoff fold. So we are now three players headed to the turn, which is a six of diamonds. I uh, don't think this improves my opponents. It definitely doesn't improve me, but I'm still going to rep a hand like ace nine at this point or something like that. But I see the small blind shove for $75 here and a um, little concerned, but also not really because the pot odds are pretty good here. And uh, I, I don't know, I'm just not really convinced that he has it for some reason. I've seen him play before. He's a pretty loose player and he makes a lot of bluffs and I don't know why I just don't believe he has the ace but um under the gun plus one folds and I have a decision here to make if I want to make the call here or if I think he's trying to get some value out of me like I said I'm not really happy with how I played this hand um, I think I made a lot of mistakes starting from pre-flop even with such an aggressive bet early but I do end up uh, putting in the call here which is questionable but he does let me know we made a good call and I have some relief pretty fast there about my decision. So my opponent uh, kind of frustratingly shows the 9-7 suited, hoping no diamond comes out and we get pretty lucky with the 3 of clubs. We take down a pot uh, by out kicking him there with the 10 of clubs. I believe I got really lucky on this hand. Um, I know I definitely shouldn't have been playing 10-9 how I did, but it ended up working out for me. We take down a pretty decent sized pot to start off our night. Pay attention to how this guy plays throughout the night. He's a pretty loose player, and you'll see more examples of that as the night goes on. But um, shortly after that, we pick up Jack-10 offsuit in under the gun. I have about 515 behind. I open race to 15 with this hand here, and under the gun plus one middle position and low jack make the call for $15. So the flop comes out Jack-5-5 five, five, Rainbow. I'm pretty sure we have the best hand at this point. Uh, we have top two pair, and I go ahead and make a C bet here for $30 to show my strength in the hand. I was the pre-flop aggressor, so I think a C bet's okay here, but it is into a few opponents, so it could have been a mistake. Uh, under the gun plus one folds pretty quickly there, and middle position raises to $100. So I'm telling myself at this point, if my next opponent folds here, I am going to make the call. I feel like we have pretty good equity with the two pair with the jack. Um, there is a chance my opponents might have something like ace-five suited or a suited connector. 
I'm willing to take that risk heads up, but that won't matter because the low jack actually makes the call for $100, and I don't feel comfortable going into two players with this hand. In hindsight, I wish I made the call. They had nothing, and we would have made a lot of money on that one, but uh, it is what it is. The game slowed down a lot until we finally pick up pocket threes about 30 minutes later and under the gun. I open raise to $12 and under the gun plus one calls. Action is now on the hijack here and they go ahead and make the fold. Cutoff looks like they're counting some chips and a raise is coming my way. They do end up three betting here to $45 and action folds back over to me. I think I should definitely be folding here and the alarm should be going off in my head that this guy has something big but I end up making the call for some reason. I think I'm just too invested in my $12. Under the gun plus one goes all in for $65. So I'm really regretting my decision here. I think we're against some pretty big hands and I feel like I'm already committed. I'm just hoping for no raise here. He ends up just making the call for $65 luckily and I can work with that. So I go ahead and call and now we are three ways headed to the flop. I'm regretting my decisions at this point out of position playing pocket threes like I did. Um, thinking we made a huge mistake until I see the flop. We nailed the set here with 4, 7, 3, and 2 clubs. Since we're out of position and we hit the set, I don't think there's much else to do here but to go all in. My opponent has about $200 behind, so we effectively made a bet for $200 here. And now the decision is on them if they want to continue on. I'm expecting them to have something like maybe aces, kings, or ace, king. Something along those lines based off of the pre-flop action. So I think we're in a really good spot here. Sure enough, he does make the call, and I'm not too worried, especially when we see another 3 come out on the turn for quads. Jack of Diamonds isn't going to do anything for anyone at this point. I've got a monster. I go ahead and table it and show them the bad news. My opponent actually lets me know that he flopped a straight with 5-6 suited. Uh, we were actually beat until the turn, so I think we got very lucky on this hand. I'm not going to continue playing 3s like this in the future. This was a mistake in theory, I believe, but it worked out. About an hour goes by, nothing else exciting really happened. We pick up ace-10 suited and under the gun, and I open raise to $15. We have about $550 behind us. Feeling good at this point, we've been taking on a lot of large pots, and I'm confident in how I'm playing. Action is now on the button, who ends up calling the $15, and shortly after that, the small blind and big blind both put in the call for $15. We're now four players headed to the flop. I'm um, out of position as a pre-flop aggressor. I understand I shouldn't be getting myself into these positions a lot of the time, especially with so many players likely to call, but the small blind and big blind check to me, showing some weakness, and I decide it's appropriate time for a C bet here, considering I have two overs to the board. I put in the bet for $50, and the button folds shortly after that. There is a backdoor flush draw out there for us as well, a nut flush draw for that matter, because we do have the ace of clubs. Um, happy with my bet overall. I don't know if being in this position was the best considering I was out of position and I have eight, ace 10 suited. I'm thinking maybe that was a little bit too loose on my part, but curious if you guys think maybe that was a mistake. Uh, small blind ends up folding and now big blind ends up also folding. So the bet worked out. We took down the pot right there. Didn't want to go any further, but if we did, we did have some outs and um, we end up taking down a decent sized pot. Not too long after this, we pick up a pretty nice hand. Uh, we've been getting lucky. We get King Jack suited. I open raise to $25, middle position calls, button calls, and small blind calls. We're now four players headed to a flop. Um, feeling pretty good about this hand, but I am again out of position, which seems to be what I like to play a lot. Don't know why so many of my hands are out of position. I need to start playing a little bit more tight in these spots, I think, but um, happy with King Jack suited. The flop comes out 10 2 4 with two clubs. We have two overs to the board and a flush draw, so I'm feeling pretty good here. Small blind checks over to me. I make a check, which is questionable. I probably could have bet on this board, but happy I didn't when I see middle position bet for $60. I'm happy with our cards in this spot. I think we have a lot of equity with King Jack suited, and I'm not going to go anywhere. When I see the button fold, um, actions on the small blind here. Regardless of what he does, I'm most likely going to call if it's not a raise. And sure enough, he does make the call here for $60. I'm more than happy to pay $60 to see how this board develops, especially since we have the two overs and a flush draw. So we are now three players headed to the turn with the pot quickly getting large. I'm getting excited here because if we do hit the flush, we have a chance to make a big profit. The five of spades comes out, so we totally miss here. Small blind checks over to me. I'm thinking he's probably on a flush draw too. Maybe he has an ace, not sure, but I check. I'm curious to see what my opponent does now. He was aggressive on the flop, so I'm assuming he'll be aggressive here. 
sure enough, what I didn't want to be true happened. He goes all in for about $155, puts me in a tough spot here, um, hoping my opponent folds. If he folds, I'm definitely gonna make the call. If he calls, I'm assuming he might have ace X and they're both clubs. And if the flush does come, I think he'll have me beat. Um, I do put my opponent on a flush draw here. The opponent to my left, I think he has maybe a pair or two pair. Um, but ultimately, I'm curious to see what my opponent does. But when he puts in the fold, I go in the tank for a bit here to make a decision. I think with those pot odds heads up, with two overs to the board and a flush draw, I'm doing a lot of thinking here and I feel like it's appropriate to call. If a club comes out, surely we have our opponent beat. I thought he would shove all in here when he's on a draw. And I do think he has maybe a pair. There's a chance he could have two pair. He plays kind of loose, but I go through the thought process and I make the call for 155. He tells me we're good, but we're definitely not good when the seven of spades comes out and he shows that he has a jack 10. Uh, he wins with top pair there. I feel like I made a good call there because of the overs to the board and then also the flush draw I had, but um, it didn't work out. So curious to see what you guys think about that. Maybe it's just better to fold in that spot. But then again, it was heads up and we had pretty good pot odds. So I feel like it was appropriate. Still kind of mad at myself about that hand, but it is what it is. No time to be sad though, because we're on the button and we pick up ace five offsuit. I'm trying to learn to polarize my range more. So I definitely think I should have raised here. Uh, low jack raises to $10 and I just make the call, unfortunately. Small blind and big blind make the call. So now we're four players headed to the flop. We can get into a lot of trouble with ace five offsuit. I know this is not a good hand to play. Not worried about it this time though, because we do hit five ace jack with two spades on the flop. Small blind and big blind check. We have two pair here and I'm feeling good about this hand so far. There's definitely a possibility someone could have an ace jack, especially when I see the hijack bet $35. So I'm a little cautious. I just make the call. Small blind and the big blind fold. We're now two players headed to the turn. I think our hand is pretty well disguised though. Ace five is probably not expected. So when the turn comes out of four of diamonds, I do think we still have a pretty nice lead here. Um, the hijack ends up actually betting $40 before the turn. I put in the call for $40. Don't want to get too aggressive here because we could definitely be against ace jack. I just want to play it safe but that bet was a little small considering his previous bet. So I'm thinking he might just be trying to test me out here. I'm really hoping this river doesn't make any Broadway straights or any flushes, no diamonds, no spades. We should be okay if that's the case. And when I see the four of clubs, I'm pretty relieved at that uh, river. My opponent has been aggressive on every street, so I'm not expecting him to slow down here. I'm expecting a big bet from him, even maybe an all in. And if that's the case, I'd most likely just fold because I am a little bit worried about ace jack but I think I'm over worried because I see him bet only for $45. This indicates to me that he might have a pair or he might have a missed flush. So I'm confident in this position that we have the best hand. However, I don't think raising is appropriate here because worse hands would probably just fold if I make a raise here uh, and better hands would maybe jam on me all in. So I don't wanna take that risk. I just put in the call for $45. And my opponent lets me know that he had a pair. So we take down a pretty nice pot here. In hindsight, I think I should have been a bit more aggressive on the flop and turn, considering that there was two flush draws out there. I think my opponent was likely trying to chase a flush. And if that's the case, we could have extracted a bit more value from him or even got him to fold a uh, possible flush draw. So um, learn from that hand a bit, but yeah. So about 10 minutes later, we pick up ace jack suited. I open raise to $15 and the button makes the call. Small blind and under the gun also make the call. So we are now four players headed to the flop. We're in under the gun plus one position here with about $425 behind us. Uh, the flop comes out 10 king four with two hearts and the pot's at about $60 at this point. Unfortunately, no spades come out, but small blind checks, under the gun checks. I go ahead and make a bet here of $25 to show some aggression. And also we have a straight draw, but we also have a over card to the board. So I think we're in a good spot. Um, we have two callers for $25. We're now three players headed to the turn. And the turn comes out a queen of clubs. We hit the straight, um, the top end of that straight for that matter. So I'm feeling like we're in a very good position here. It's unlikely a flush will be made this hand. Under the gun checks over to me and I have a decision here on what I want to do. I'm trying to think what my opponents would call here. So I ultimately decide for $115, the button folds. And then uh, to my surprise, the opponent to my right ends up jamming all in for what is effectively $165. I snap call and he shows jack nine offsuit. Uh, really unfortunate for him. A queen comes out on a river that's not helping anybody. And um, yeah, he made a good straight. Um, just really unlucky that I had ace jack that hand for him. 
we take down a massive pot with that. Um, I don't envy his position. That is always the worst when you have a pretty good hand and that happens, but but happens to me a lot too. And I guess that's just poker. Um, I got lucky that hand and it worked out for me. So very thankful for that. So close to 10 minutes go by. This is one of my last hands of the night. We pick up 5-4 offsuit in the button with about $600 behind us. We're up about $300 at this point. Um, we've been going up and down throughout the night. Some small losses here and there have added up, but when it limps over to me, I end up just limping here. I do think um, maybe a raise is appropriate since I'm on the button, or maybe I'm supposed to just fold in the spot with 5-4 offsuit. This is not a strong hand at all, but I'm on the button and I just want to see what happens. Pretty happy I stayed in though, and I see 5-ace-5 five with two spades come out on the flop. I'm thinking we have the best hand for sure at this point, and when I see four opponents check over, I'm definitely confident that we have the best hand. Middle position does make a bet for $20 though, and I put in the call thinking that he might have an ace, x, something like that, and we have him beat. When I see everyone else fold, I'm confident we have the best hand at this point, and I'm excited to try to extract some value here. We're heads up headed to the turn. I do think my opponent is likely to have an ace in this position, so I'm really hoping no ace comes out, and I'm pretty fortunate when I see a two of hearts come out. Uh, we still have the best hand, is what I'm thinking at least, but when he checks over to me, I go ahead and make a bet for $25, and he quickly calls that off. Still hoping for no aces to come out and the six of clubs come out. He checks over to me. I'm confident we have the best hand at this point. There's no way he'd have a five in this spot, so I make a bet for $115. He ends up snapping it off and showing 9-5 suited. Pretty huge loss for us. Uh, did not expect that. He hit his hand pretty well. If anything over a 9 came out on the river, we would have just chopped. So I think I got fairly unlucky there, but probably misplayed as well. And we take a pretty big loss to end the night. What's up, everybody? Uh, wrapping up my session over at the bike in LA. Uh, had a really good session. Honestly, there was a lot of action. Um, I tried 2-3 today, and I had a lot more fun. The table was... Uh, a lot more chill, a lot more action, and um, I met a lot of really cool people. Um, I met a guy named Phil and another guy named Eli and a few others, and they were super cool people, super fun to play with. Um, I think I learned a lot from this session. Gonna go home and make sure I study all my mistakes and what I did wrong and all that. But um, yeah, overall, pretty good session. We ended up about $115, 120 115 something like that. So um, starting off June, pretty good, I would say. You know, May didn't end too well, but uh, that's what I'm studying for and uh, gonna make June a, a better month. So, yeah, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.